Hello, Beefcakes. I am here, and I want to just talk about some newer movies that I've seen, um, which is quite a few. It's been a while since I've uploaded. Uh, sorry about that. Let's begin. The first film is a film on YouTube called Drowning in Potential. It was directed by Joel Haver and Dax Lance. Um, this film was about two actors, friends who are in LA. Um, and uh, Joel Haver is best known for being a YouTuber, filmmaker, and more famously a commenter on one of my videos. Um, he made this film with Dax Lance and it was improvised for two weeks and the editing took one month to make. No script at all, no budget. And it is really, really good. And they were doing this while they were making YouTube content. I think Joel Haver is a real inspiration for me when it comes to uh, just his output and his effort that he puts into his content on YouTube as well as his uh, films. And um, the, the movie is very funny and it's also really sad and nihilistic. And uh, Dax Flames really steals the show with his performance. Um, this is, in some ways, like kind of a showcase of his acting ability. And he does a really great job, and he really actually made me quite uncomfortable by the end of it as he just gets closer to the edge. You know, there were times where the directing got a little repetitive and it kind of dragged a bit. It's not like a, a plot-driven film by any means. It definitely benefits from its short runtime, and I definitely enjoyed it a lot. So uh, yeah, great film, I highly recommend it. Um, also, really good song at the end of the film. The next thing I watched was The Beatles Get Back. Uh, Peter Jackson has gone from reviving World War I to The Beatles, and ever since the trailer dropped for this music documentary, I have been very excited because not only am I a fan of The Beatles, but I am also a fiend for behind the scenes footage of uh, movies, music, or whatever, like any creative process, I am just very fascinated with how it's done, how it's pulled off. And um, this was just hours of arguably the best band of all time doing that. It was honestly really great. I think that, um, yeah, you do spend a lot of time with the band doing nothing, but it's actually pretty cool because you get to see them more as people. You're hanging out with them more than anything. You don't really see them as like music gods anymore. You really get a feel for their personality and such. The restoration of film and sound here is absolutely fantastic. And the directing from Peter Jackson was very, very careful, precise. It never like got in the way of the incredible footage that we have like the privilege of seeing. And um, the editing choices that he made, especially in the concert at the end, was really, really fantastic and it was very well done. Um, and obviously this is not the work of one man. This is a whole crew, not just the crew um, restoring this film and all that, but also the crew um, at the time documenting the Beatles. They all did a fantastic job. They deserve a cold beer, a slap on the ass, and a warm hug. I did wish that maybe we got a little more context to where the, how the band was feeling going into this um, because there was a tension in the room but we never really knew why. We did get a Wikipedia summary at the beginning of the documentary but we didn't get that much context of how they felt going into this album and um, it did get dull at times as you'd imagine. And um, But overall it was just great and I will definitely get back to watching this. I mean, you gotta like and subscribe now. I mean, the joke like with the comedy you're getting here, come on now, come on. Come on. Next film is Tick, Tick, Boom, starring Andrew Garfield, directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Uh, this is a musical biopic following Jonathan Larson, the writer, creator of Rent, a famous Broadway play, and it actually follows his life before his making of this, and his, uh, him in New York in the 80s, and sort of him turning 30 years old and him having stressing out over having nothing to look back on after years of trying to create something great and um, just follows him navigating through life. Um, Andrew Garfield does a wonderful job here. I like a lot of what he's doing in this film. He does a fantastic job and I also love how he sings in an American accent. I always see, when I see a musical with actors who are British and they're playing Americans, they sing in a British accent. And it's stupid. I'm looking at the guy from across the universe. You suck. Andrew Garfield is great. You are not. I'm 18 years old. 
Um, so I'm very far from the stresses of turning 30 years old. Um, and I never really understood this because whenever it was my birthday, I never felt like a completely different person. I mean, when I turned 18, which is a pretty significant age because of like loss and whatever, I didn't feel like I was a completely different person than the day before when I was 17. Um, and I've always seen people freak out about turning 30 and like 25 year olds crying about how old they are and I just, I, I struggle to sympathize. It isn't that those feelings are invalid or anything, but just that it's so unrelatable to me that I almost find it silly. So it's not, this movie wasn't like as impactful as it would have been perhaps when I become 29 or whatever. And I do feel that stress that I may feel. I thought the supporting cast was actually very fantastic. Um, the songs were kind of forgettable, except for a few Bohemian songs I really liked, like a lot of people do. And um, even though I couldn't totally connect to it, I did feel the passion behind the camera from Lin-Manuel Miranda. And um, I definitely think it's a movie that people should watch. Uh, personally though, I don't think I'm gonna rush to rewatch it. My next film is The Power of the Dog. Jane Campion is back after her long ass movie hiatus. Um, a lot of people would argue that she's one of the GOAT directors and I wouldn't personally agree. In fact, I might even argue against it. But um, yeah, The Piano was a pretty good movie. Uh, Bright Star is a nice little period piece. It's probably my, was my favorite of hers until I saw this film because this right here I think is my favorite of hers. Um, it's a film that follows an enigmatic cowboy and uh, sort of a examination of his toxic behaviors towards his brother's uh, wife and stepson. This is a film about toxic masculinity. And while I don't think the film is saying anything groundbreaking or hasn't been said by movies since like the 60s, it still had brilliant performances by Benedict Cumberbatch and Kirsten Dunst. I thought that the cinematography was beautiful, the music was good, and had some really interesting artistic choices by the Kiwi's own Kurosawa. So while I have as little to say about the subject matter as the film does itself, and the ending had a, I mean, I just didn't understand the ending, I still think that it is a very good movie, and I hope that Jane Campion does not take a long break again, because I'm excited to see what she does next. I recommend The Power of the Dog. The next film is Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, I have not seen Homecoming or Far From Home, uh, but I still found it very easy to follow along what was going on. And uh, I actually really enjoyed it. It's a lot better made than I thought it would be and it had a lot more heart than I thought it would be. It was kind of cheesy at times, but I mean, I would prefer that really for a superhero movie, especially when it's Spider-Man. I thought the themes of second chances and putting others before yourself are very Spider-Man themes. And it, it makes a lot of sense for the premise, which is like characters coming back from uh, the past films onto the Tom Holland universe. Um, the Marvel humor, which usually pisses me off, uh, which is pretty much when characters make like a snappy joke in a serious situation, which kind of breaks the tension in a way. But uh, I actually found myself smiling a lot throughout the film. I thought it was actually a really, really funny movie. Um, and the performances were also very good. Um, even though I think Tom Seaton Church and Jimmy Fox kind of phoned it in, uh, they were overall really good, especially Alfred Molina and especially Willem Dafoe. They brought their A-game and they really, really kicked some ass. Okay, now spoilers. I'm going all in. I'm going straight in. Alright. Three, two, one. Oh my god, the past Spider-Mans are back. Although it was a pretty obvious thing that Andrew Garfield and Tommy McGuire would come back for this film. Uh, it was still nice to not see it in trailers and to see it for the first time in a cinema. Um, man, seeing Andrew Garfield again was so great. Uh, he brought so much passion and, uh, and love to his performance that it, it really solidified my opinion, my personal opinion, of him being the best Spider-Man. Tommy McGuire phoned it in. I got the vibe that it took a lot of money to convince him to showing off as Spider-Man again. But, um, you know, it was still nice to just see him there and to have, like, a pretty sizable role, not just cameos where they briefly come back to help them out and fight that we got some scenes and it was really good um and he wasn't totally filming it in maybe i'm being a little mean the death of aunt may was sadder than i thought it would be i mean i haven't seen the previous two films i'm not invested in the relationship between peter parker and aunt may 
but Marissa Tomei and uh, Tom Holland do such a wonderful job, and it's actually, even though it is a pretty corny scene, especially with the overwhelming score of the film, it was still really good. And uh, Tom Holland does just a brilliant job in this performance. He, he does a really great job here. And uh, I love the ending of him choosing not to tell MJ and Ned who he is and what they've been through and just to go it alone and fight crime as he's supposed to. Um, just a great nostalgia big corporate movie that I would recommend. I had a good time. Well, these are the newest films that I have seen. Hopefully I can get to watch uh, Licorice Pizza, Come On, Come On, The French Dispatch pretty soon. I'm actually planning on seeing uh, uh, Licorice Pizza on Christmas Day. Um, yeah, so have a great day, everybody. Go to the go to the gym, get beefy, so you can join a higher rank of the Beefcake Supreme Force. Uh, like and subscribe. Goodbye.